and uh, this is the anti-squat okay okay so when you when you pedal when you accelerate you create tension in the chain and the tension in the chain will affect the suspension either it compresses the suspension or it extends the suspension and this is anti-squat it's as simple as that is the effect of the chain okay the effect of the chain tension on the suspension here in this example i change the, the chain line to exaggerate the anti-squat and basically when i create tension in the chain uh, the chain pulls the suspension and extends the suspension okay so this is the anti-squat so why do we need anti-squat to understand this we need to understand the acceleration squat so in this example in a car when you accelerate the 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 weight the weight transfer the weight moves backwards okay transfers backwards and this causes the squat in the rear suspension okay so the acceleration squat is caused by the weight or the load transfer uh, to backwards in this example here we have three cars uh, doing the same acceleration okay so the the first one has an anti squat very low anti squat so the the result is that it squats during the acceleration in this case you have 100% anti squat so the result is that nothing happens and in this case you have a very high uh, anti squat so during the acceleration the back of the car rises okay so in this example the squat force is caused by the weight transfer to behind and since the acceleration is the same in all cases this force will be the same in the three cases what changes here is the anti-squat uh, amount of force okay so as you can see in this example you have a very high anti-squat so the end result is that the rear suspension rises in this case you have a perfect balance uh, suspension so nothing happens and in this case you have a very low uh, anti-squat so the result is that the, the suspension squats okay so in mountain bikes is the same principle okay each time you promote an acceleration okay each time you hit the pedals uh, you accelerate forward and then the the weight transfer goes backwards so the suspension squats however in mountain bikes there is another another force not only you have the acceleration horizontal acceleration force causing the the, the the suspension to squat but you you also have a vertical acceleration force this is due to the biomechanics of pedaling okay so your legs move up and down and your body also moves up and down during pedaling so this causes an extra uh, squat force okay and this is especially uh, uh, true when you are uh, pedaling on foot like sprinting or or if you have bad pedaling technique your body moves a lot up and down and this causes an additional um, uh, squat uh, forces okay so there are many people that uh, think that on mountain bikes uh, the anti squat to reduce completely the, the pedal bob should be higher than 100% and maybe uh, it should be like 150% keep in mind that when you have pedal bob it means that your energy is being wasted uh, in compressing the suspension so no pedal bob means that no energy is being transferred to the suspension and then you have maximum efficiency so the question is how can you determine the anti-squat percentage for instance in this example in this bike how can you know if the bike pedals good or not to determine the anti-squat value you first need to find the instant center of the suspension if you saw my previous video you already know that what is the instant center and you know that in single pivot bikes the instant center is the main pivot so now that you know the instant center you draw a line between the rear axle the axle wheel and the instant center and this line is the swing arm it basically means that the the wheel is rotating around the instant center now it's time to look for the chain line we know that the chain is here okay this is the chain line but imagine that the chain 
was like this pointing below pushing below this means that the shine that the, the tension of the shine will pull will extend the, the suspension okay it will pull the wheel down okay now in this case the chain line is the orange line as you can see so the um, it's also pulling down okay so it's also trying to extend the suspension and uh, the intersection is this uh, yellow yellow circle and the point of intersection is very important and it's what determines the value of the anti squat so basically if these points uh, of intersection is in this yellow zone uh, for for every bike if it is in this yellow zone then you have a good pedaling efficiency if this intersection ends up like here you have a very low uh, anti-squat uh, efficiency and then if the this intersection ends up like in this zone you have a very high anti-squat uh, percentage so in my in my video as you as you noticed the chain line i put the chain line passing below the the chain ring of the bottom bracket so this was due to exaggerate the amount of anti squat and as you can see this is the chain line and if you if you did the, the same the same experiment in this bike the chain line was like something like this okay and the intersection of this chain line will be there so th this will create a very high anti-squat um, value so that's why it's it's it was so easy in the video to extend the the, the rear suspension uh, with that trick okay so in the last example the chain line was like in this angle okay pointing pointing below okay now imagine that the chain line you have an idler pool like, uh, like here and the chain line is like this. So what happens? In this case if you imagine that the chain line is like this, when you create tension on the chain, what happens is that you compress the suspension. Okay? And in this case you have a negative anti-squat. Okay, so when you have a negative anti-squat, uh, the chain tension caused by the pedaling also compresses the suspension. Okay, so not only the suspension is compressed caused by the acceleration, but the chain tension also compresses the, the suspension. And this is not very common, but it, it happens in, in, some, in some bikes. Okay, so in the last example, if you imagine that you have a idly pull here and the chain goes like this, okay, um, as you can see, this causes a huge, uh, a huge squat of the suspensions. So uh, if you if you look at this drawing, uh, the intersection of the swing arm line and the chain line will be behind the the rear axle. So you have a very, a very negative anti squat like minus 500 or something like that uh, please keep in mind that not all bikes that have a shine line like that have a negative anti-squat for instance in this case the zero it has a shine line like that but if you look to the sing swing arm line okay so the instant center is there if you look to the swing arm line the swing arm line is like this and then if you look to the shine line is like this Okay, so the intersection of, of both lines are in this point and as you can see and as, as we saw previously uh, this point is within the good pedaling uh, anti-squat zone okay so to determine the anti-squat don't forget to look to the swing arm line so to conclude anti-squat is what the chain does to the suspension and as you can see uh, by changing the chain angle, you affect the, the, the amount of anti-squat. Uh, either it can be very positive or it can be negative. So, see ya guys and stay tuned.